Good to see you, Jim. And thank you for again putting your cape on and helping WNCN to help Matt Edwards with his cold. Well, I hope Matt feels better, and uh, my pleasure to be here. And I'll tell you from the beginning, I haven't had a chance to listen because of time to all of this, except when I have come in. And uh, I hope I can just sit and listen today a lot and learn. We're going and to... enjoy. Oh, no, no learning. Learning. Oh. <laughs> and enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> uh, well, we've been out of list, you know, and mm -hmm. into Beethoven sonatas. It's quite another world. And uh, we stopped yesterday with the complete performance of the Grand Sonata in E-flat, Opus 7, 1797. So we have... Uh, the 1798 group of sonatas from the Opus 10 series. And the first one is in C minor. And then we have one in F major and D major. And after the three in Opus 10, we move to the 1799 sonata, which is the most famous of the early ones, and it's the Sonata Patetique, with the title actually sanctioned by Beethoven. Usually he didn't like titles. So we have a performance now by a new pianist joining the ranks of Beethoven players, and his name is Stephen Bishop, and he was born in 1940 in San Francisco. He studied with various people, I think chief among them, Myra Hess, and he lives in London today. So he's 36 years old and a superb Beethoven player, and we have the first movement of the C minor sonata, opus 10, number 1, Stephen Bishop.
sonata in C minor, the fifth piano sonata composed by Beethoven, and uh, here is Beethoven really opening up in that key of C minor, which would uh, be a famous key for him. Truly writing in dramatic style for the first time in the sonatas, although premonitions of it in the first sonata. Now we have another performance, and Alfred Brendel, who hasn't been on these programs in Beethoven, will now be heard in the first movement of the sonata in C minor.
Alfred Brendel in the C minor sonata, the first movement, and let's hear Bruce Hungerford. I think I'm going to be very pleased with Bruce.
And that was the Allegro Molto e Combrio, the first movement of the C minor sonata, opus 10, number 1. The performance, Bruce Hungerford. And David will be back with music if you'll read something to everyone right there. Okay. There is a movement, is an adagio molto, very slow. Tovi writes, the tempo is so slow as to put a considerable strain on the broad simplicity of the whole, especially in its coda. The resulting problem is solved by cultivating a rich singing tone ranging from a Chopinesque lightness in the very rapid 30-second notes to an Italian bel canto in the long notes. Well, that's how we solve it. And let's hear Gieseking, who could certainly ravish one with a singing tone in the slow movement of the Opus 10, number one.
And we heard the two movements, the remaining two movements of the sonata in C minor. And it was not my fault. It was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you said your arm was so heavy that you couldn't possibly lift it up. Stop it so. in time. My, my apologies to Matt, who's home probably cringing just then. <laughs> I should have been more alert. And I also apologize for the scratch in the Stephen Bishop album. We're always terrified of scratches, and this one we yes. can't seem to track down. It's a, quite a new recording. Why? It is, and sometimes uh, I guess it's something that sets in a groove that even the cleaning which we do prior to everything that we airplay uh, didn't catch that. Yeah. that. That is a bane of our existence. Oh, it is. Oh. <laughs> in other words, we just never know what will happen with any recording. They know oh. it's live, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear the two movements now, the Adagio Molto and the Prestissimo Finale of Opus 10, number one, played by Wilhelm Bachhaus.
Second and third movements of the Sonata in C minor, opus 10, number 1, and I'm getting very impressed with Wilhelm Bachhaus. During the Brahms programs, in his performances of Brahms, which were always highly respected, I just didn't like most of them. But these, these sonatas are played with such simplicity and yet with drama, the music speaks, Bachhaus is very impressive in these sonatas. They're all recorded on London, right? Yes, this is a complete album, and I was uh, impressed. I was going to say that uh, could I pull an Edwardian thing? I hear Matt uh, say every now and then, you know, he, he uh -huh. gives his opinion of what he likes. Yes, absolutely. Best so far, and uh, I'm uh, leaning towards the Gieseking uh -huh. rendition so far as... as uh, a little more of everything uh -huh. in, in the in the slow passages and also in the uh, in the finale there. Gisa King was a poet, mm. and I'm not used to Gisa King's performance of Beethoven. I think that perhaps many people aren't, but uh, it's interesting. You know, you stereotype players just like actors or anything else, and always when Gisa King comes to mind, instantaneous. Impressionism, Debussy or Ravel. And of course, he played everything. Yes. He's, he's recorded all of Mozart's piano music, many Beethoven sonatas. Let's get to that last movement now in a performance by a pianist that uh, is not really well known, here at least in America, and that's Robert Riefling.
And that was the last movement marked prestissimo, a rare marking in Beethoven sonatas. Performance by Robert Riefling. How about hearing the performance by Arthur Schnabel? Schnabel is a dynamo, and that, Jim, was the fastest tempo we have heard. And you were wanting to hear a fast tempo. You yes. said, well, if it's prestissimo, well, let's hear it that way. <laughs> that, but, that was really, really fast. Yeah. He often plays fast. But as you said, the, the, the contrast are there. He's able to reconcile the, uh, the two elements of tempo in that last movement. Uh, uh, prestissimo is a, uh, a dangerous recommendation for Beethoven. He only used it in this sonata, I think, and 109. And uh, it's because he is uh, he's working with the cut time and the common time, the alabrev and the four four. So uh, Schnabel somehow knows how to reconcile the slower passages, the lyrical passages, with the uh, fast tempo. And we really did not hear a fast tempo until that performance. <laughs> 